Hello friends, welcome back. Today we have a couple of very cute cards. Fall is on its way y'all and this is one of my favorite times to craft because I love the color palette so much. So today we've got a few clean and simple cards to work on. So when I saw this fall foxes from the rabbit hole designs, I fell in love and knew that I wanted to color these up and make them the focal point of my cards. Now they also had this Autumn is Calling stamp set and I originally was gonna use this wreath here, but in the end I decided just to go with the foxes. I also really love these little book images in here. They are too cute. The illustrations are great. They also released the Falling Leaves background stamp set. This is um, a large six by six background stamp and there's also a stencil available which will make the coloring quick and easy. All right, so I'm using 80 pound Nina super smooth cardstock here. I'm stamping these with my Misty and I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. This is still my ink of choice for Copic coloring. Uh, some habits die hard, you guys. Still my preferred tried and true. I usually do not stamp my stamps multiple times. However, the line weight on these stamps is very thin, very fine, which makes them perfect for no line coloring if that's your jam, which I do quite enjoy. But for these, um, I wanted a little bit bolder outline and they are brand new. So it took, uh, I wanna say I stamped these three times to get a nice, crisp, clean, bolder black outline. Again, I normally don't double or triple stamp, but again, these are fine line. So I was able to do multiple impressions without blowing out the stamp image. All right, so we're gonna be doing some Copic coloring. There is almost nothing more vibrant or intense as alcohol markers, no matter which brand you own, the alcohol markers are gonna give you the boldest, deepest color. And that's what I wanted for these little foxes because I'm going to keep them as my main focal point on all of my cards today. And having them be super vibrant is going to help carry that clean and simple design. So I'm starting off with an E07 for my darkest, darks on my fox. Now I do end up adding and I want to say an E19, a very minimal amount of E19 on this one. But for the most part, this is going to be my dark E07. This has a very red hue to it and it's nice and dark, but it's uh, still got some luminosity to it. It's not uh, so dark that it's dull or flat you still get to see some of the white of the paper shine through and it gives it this nice glow even in those dark areas. You can see there I've already colored up one of our little foxes and uh, this is the method that I used to color that fox. So I'll be sharing my color combo here which is what I used for again all of the foxes. So I'm mapping in those dark areas with my darkest color, and then I'm gonna come in with the YR24. Now this is a beautiful uh, golden color, and it's gonna be perfect for our fox. I'm gonna take this just slightly past where I used the previous color. This is, they're not gonna blend perfectly at this point. It will be the next color that will bridge the gap between these two colors. So don't freak out thinking you have to get a perfect blend between your any of your two colors, right? So I've laid down that E07, now I'm laying down the YR24. They're not going to create a perfect blend. They're a little too far apart. Um, but again, the next color that I use is gonna bridge that gap, but it's going to retain that glow and that warmth underneath the E, uh, I think 13. I'm gonna come in with an E13 next. Now you can see here, I'm using that YR24 to create just a little bit of shadow on either side of his snout there because their nose does come to a point, but I did not want to use the darkest dark for my shadow there. Even your shadows will have levels of depth. So hit the back of his head is going to be going back much further than his snout. So that is why I did not take my darkest shadow color up by his nose because I still want it to appear as if it is coming forward a little bit more than the sides or the back of his head because it is. So now I'm taking that E13 and you can see that how nicely that bridged that gap between the E07 and the YR24. 
but because we glazed that over that YR, we still have that warm glow underneath. And here I'm using that E13 to create a shadow right above his nose. It's darker, so like I said, we've got the shadow above the nose, we've got a deeper shadow on the sides of the nose, and then we've got an even deeper shadow on the sides of the head. This is going to add some dimension. Now I'm adding my highlight. This is Y11 and it looks crazy right now, but give it a second. I have a hole in my YRs. I don't have a lot of my YRs, but by using my Y11 and my E11 and glazing them on top of each other, I can get a warmer, lighter brown red here. So mixing that E and that Y gives me that glow on that highlighted area. I'm going to hit it again with that Y11 just to brighten it up even more. And now you can see how there's still that warmth underneath there. Here's where I mentioned I was going to come in with a little bit of E, I, was E15 or E19? E15? Yeah, a little bit of that E15 just in my deepest darks. And again, I'm just helping to create some levels of depth in the shadow areas. And it never hurts to come over with a second layer if you want to achieve a little more depth. So I'm going to come back in with that EO7, darken that up just a little bit more. Alcohol markers are transparent, so the colors will layer over each other and create more depth. So one layer of EO7 is not going to be as dark as two layers of EO7. They're going to build upon each other. So you don't always have to have the next darker color marker. Try layering up the same marker twice. All right, and since we did add another layer of those darks, we just need to blend these together again. So taking an E13, blending that into my highlight. And then I'll do the same thing with the Y11 and the E11. Here I'm also taking the time to further uh, finesse or shape my highlight area. I'm gonna have my light source on all of these coming from the center front, so I can control how big or small I want that highlight. And here I know that the top of his head is going to be catching the most light. And so I'm further refining that highlight and the brightest spot to be just on the very top of his head. All right, so for their ears and their feet, they are tipped in black. And for that, I'm going to use my W's. I prefer to use W's for animals or anything that's alive. They're just a warmer gray. And I never, I don't say never, I hardly ever use black. I use it very sparingly. I'd rather use a darker gray, one of the darkest grays to achieve what looks like black than to go with a straight flat black because even if his ears are black, they're going to be catching light. So they're going to have a little bit of uh, luminosity to them. So you don't want to go with it just a pure flat black. So I've started with that W8. I'm going to blend that down and blend it down with a W6 and that's going to slowly, we're going to fade this into the red of his fur. Now I'm going to speed up the rest of this process. I'm going to show you guys how I colored some key parts and I'll point out anything that is important along the way. Now, if you'd like a deeper dive into the coloring of these foxes, you can join our Facebook group, uh, W plus nine encourage creativity community over on Facebook. I did color the fox there with the mushroom and the snail in real time last Thursday. I go live every Thursday night at 8 p.m. And a lot of the videos here that I post on YouTube, you will uh, be able to watch real time creation of some of the key portions of these cards. So anything that you want to see real time or if you need a deeper dive, make sure you join our group. We would love to have you. So here on the nose, I'm using the W8 and I'm just going to blur out the top with a little W2. That's gonna make his nose look highlighted, uh, not flat or just solid black. It gives it some depth. Same here with his face. I'm adding a little bit of shadow using the W2 and blending that out with the W0 and a zero. Again, I want his snout to, or I want that underneath there to be white, but I do wanna add some shadows. I'm doing the same thing with the inside of his ears, adding a little bit of some darker Ws, and then pulling those out with the lighter Ws. And this just gives him that little tuft of white fur inside his ears. 
All right, so I used the exact same technique for the feet as I did for the ears, and now I'm moving on to the rest of the body. I'm gonna use all the same colors with one exception. My highlights are not going to be as bright on the body as they are on the very top of his head. So my highlight is going to be smaller and it is not going to be as bright. So we're not going to use a larger area of that Y11 and E11. In fact, um, the only thing I do is I fill it all in without the E11 and then I just kind of bring a little bit of that E11 over the highlight to lighten it just a little. Now the reason that I don't want the exact same highlight on his body as I do on his head is because his head is further out. It's coming, um, it's closer to us, right? And it is higher. Is His head is shadowing his body. So light will be reaching his body, but not to the intensity that it's reaching the very front of his head. So you'll notice that I've matched my highlight strengths to the depth of which they are in our field of view. The head is closest to us, it gets the brightest highlight. The body or the legs are the next level, but they are being shaded by his head. So they have the next brightest and then his body there is almost completely in shadow. So it just has the tiniest sliver of highlight. Now the tail is going to be bright in just a couple little spots. So you'll see here, I've used all the same colors. I've added in my Y11 for the highlight. Now I'm knocking it back with that E11. I still felt like it was a little too bright, a little too bold, too much highlight hitting it. So I'm gonna come in here with my darker colors and we're gonna close up some of that highlight. I find it much easier to start with a larger highlight and then close in on it because then I can control the amount of highlight without getting too dark too fast. So allow yourself lots of room for your highlight and then slowly close it up to the size that you want it. Again, it's always easier to go darker, but once you've gone too dark, it's hard to go lighter. Okay, for the scarf, I'm using BG10 to map in my shadows. Now I'm coming in with BG75 and I am putting in my shadows, blending that out with a BG18. And then I will come in with the BG11 and further soften that out. Now those were a little too far apart, so we're gonna blend again with the BG13. And then we'll come in with the BG11 and 10 again after that. Now don't be afraid to layer your markers. Remember, they're transparent. The more layers you put, the deeper your color will get. Also, you can glaze different colors over each other to tint them. So don't be afraid to really build up that color. Um, if you want a good, beautiful blend, two layers at least. Now, if you're looking at my coloring and thinking, why are the colors so bright, so saturated? Um, I will tell you, again, I'm working on the Nina Super Smooth cardstock. This is 80 pound. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Um, the ink, I feel like the ink sits on top of the paper just a little bit longer. It allows you to pull a darker color with a lighter color marker and the colors are so much more vibrant on the super smooth than they are on the regular smooth cardstock. Um, I showed a comparison on the Facebook uh, group last week. Uh, same colors on the smooth versus the super smooth and the super smooth is way brighter, saturated and intense. All right, so for the leaves, I used a combination of different markers for each leaf, but the same three groups of combinations. What I did was I just used them in varying amounts. I didn't want every leaf that was orangey brown to look identical or every leaf that was green to look identical. So what I did was for the brownish reddish leaves, I used E07, YR24, and Y11. You'll notice that these are the same colors I used in the fox. Um, I wanted to create some harmony there, so I made sure to use the same colors in my reddish brown leaves, but I used them in different combos and in different variations for each leaf. So again, they wouldn't be identical. Now for the green leaves, I used G28, YG25, and Y11, and again, used them in different amounts and different variations per leaf. 
And then for the more purpley, uh, wineish colored leaves, I used RV99, RV69, RV19, and RV02. And again, using them in different amounts and in different combinations, just to add a little bit of variation and life to the overall composition. So for all of the leaves, I did that in this image and in all of the leaves that you see stamped at the top of the page there. Then what I did was I took the coordinating dies for everything here and cut them out. The nice thing about the leaves is it stamps four leaves and then the die, all four of those leaves are on the same die so they cut simultaneously. So one die to cut all four leaves, kinda nice. <laughs> you know having to line up each one and run it through each time. All right, so I went ahead and laid out my first my first card, and I think this makes a very strong focal point. You could stamp your sentiment and be done, but I wanna create a vertical stacking of sentiments to run down the background. I do want these to be clean and simple, but I still want them to have a little bit of interest. So that's where we're going to pick some things to just kind of kick it up just a bit while still keeping that clean and simple. So I'm gonna pick this up on Press and Seal, put it off to the side, and then we can work on the background. I'm using my Misty and the grid mat in the background to help me get this perfectly centered and spaced. I'm gonna be stamping this repeatedly in a vertical line across the background, and you already know maths are not my thing. The maths hurt my brain, and I'm not pulling out a ruler. <laughs> so the Misty measurements are going to help me here. I'm gonna stamp it first in the very center of my cardstock. I'll count the squares to the left and the right. There's three on each side, I'm good. And I am putting this at two and three quarters. So if you look at the left side of your Misty there, one, two, two and three quarters would be half of five and a half. And is that right? Yes. <laughs> and so I'm gonna stamp that first there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift my cardstock up two and a half squares. So you can see my grid mat in the back there. I'm not even bothering with the measurements here. I'm just gonna slide it up one, two and a half. And this is gonna be close enough for me. I'm gonna ink that up again with my warm wool ink. This is W plus nine's warm wool. Beautiful light gray, um, warm gray, very warm gray, almost brown, khaki maybe, color wool. I don't even know how to explain this color. It's a beautiful color. <laughs> it's a light brown gray. We'll go with that. Now I'm gonna slide it up again, another two and a half squares, and then I'm going to stamp it again. So I'm gonna repeat this until I get to the bottom of the cardstock, but I'm gonna stop just shy. I want this to be centered in the cardstock. I don't want it to go off the edge. And then once I've got all of these done and I, I'm run out of room of my paper, I'm actually going to flip the paper upside down. I'm gonna flip my stamp upside down and I'm gonna repeat the same process. Again, I'm a good enough is perfect for me. So I'm eyeballing it and it comes out close enough. Now remember, I'm going to be centering my fox focal point over the top of this. So if I didn't get this perfect, it's gonna be hidden anyway, so it's not that important, but close enough is good enough. And I'm gonna repeat that same thing. I'm now I'm gonna slide that card stock up two and a half squares and then stamp again. Pretty easy. All right, I'm gonna mat this on a black card base. So I'm gonna trim this down on each side a quarter of an inch to keep it all centered and then I am ready to put together the rest of my card. Now you guys have seen this a million times. I'm using the press and seal trick. I'm first adhering my leaves to the background. So I adhere, I adhere to layer flat using some liquid adhesive. Now I'm adhering the next level of leaves using a little foam adhesive. And this is the um, foam strips. These are the foam strips from Honey Bee Stamps. And then we're gonna do something different for the fox. I was originally going to adhere it with foam tape, but I decided, why don't we add an action wobbler? Now, I bought these from Art Impressions a while ago, and I've never used them. I love action wobblers. I love the idea of them. I just never had, I don't know, I just forget about them. 
Um, so I thought these ones, since I want to keep this clean and simple, I thought this would be the perfect set of cards to use some action wobblers on. So this is a spring and it presses down flat. And what you're going to do is release the paper from one side and adhere it to the back of your die cut. And then you're going to release the other side and adhere it to your card. But remember, I colored this on 80 pound Nina cardstock. So I want my, um, I want my fox there to be, a, I want it to have a little bit more stability. So I've cut several, I think I cut two more, glued them back to back. So now I have a more like a chipboard piece and that's now ready to adhere using the action wobbler. And these come in two sizes. These are the mini action wobblers. They also have a larger one. And full disclosure, I do end up swapping this out for the larger one. This die cut is large enough to accommodate the large action wobbler. And when I put the small one on here, it just wasn't stable enough. The die cut was sitting unlevel. It allowed it to sag on one side and I wanted it to be more level. So I did end up swapping it off camera, but I followed the same steps. I attached it to the die cut, burnished the sticky with my bone folder, removed the other side of the release tape and then adhered it to my card. I finished it off with the It's Fall Y'all sentiment heat embossed on black. And then here you can see that little action wobble. Oh, it's so cute. All right, so let's uh, look at the next card. So this is the fox that we colored together. And I've got some more of those little leaves. I used the same gen general idea for every card here, a fox and then a swirling of leaves around them in the background. So now um, for the sentiment on this one, I'm gonna go to that Autumn is Calling stamp set. I'm gonna grab the Autumn is calling and then I'm going to also grab the uh, leaves are falling. Now I wanted to create a right side sentiment. So I wanted these the sentiment to be right side heavy and this leaves are falling was a little too too long. Uh, it kind of split the card. I didn't like that straight space uh, that upper third of the card being completely blank. So we're going to split that sentiment. Now I've already stamped as calling and the autumn is going to be die cut and stacked. So I'm using that. I put it down for spacing for where I need to start stamping leaves are falling. Now remember, we're going to split this and stack it. So we're going to first, we're going to mask off the leaves part and we're going to stamp only are falling. So I'm going to use a piece of washi tape. I'm going to cover up leaves, ink this up. Make sure you remove whatever you're using to mask. You can use Ma you can use uh, painter's tape, washi tape, post-it note, whatever you want. Just make sure you remove that. I've forgotten so many times in ruined projects, guys. <laughs> now here you can see I got an incomplete stamping because I got an incomplete inking. So I'm going to recover that up, re-ink it, and re-stamp it. Now because we're using the Misty, uh, this is a no fail. I can just keep everything in the same spot, re-ink it, and stamp it back down. All right, so now we are going to move our sentiment, line up the leaves exactly where we need it, and do the exact same thing. Now, two tips here. One, make sure your stamp is really clean. If you have any ink left on that R falling portion, when you go to place your stamp, you're going to get a ghosting impression of it. So make sure your stamp is really clean. Two, make sure that you are wiping your hands between removing that washi tape or the post-it note, whatever it is. It's got ink sitting on top of it. And if you touch the ink, it's gonna get on your fingertips and then you're going to get it on your card base. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Just make sure you're wiping your hands and cleaning that stamp. Now, originally I had stamped and die cut the autumn in black on white, but I decided I wanted something a little more dramatic. So we're gonna do heat embossed white on black. So I've got the rabbit hole designs powder tool here and I'm treating that black cardstock. This is going to make sure that my embossing powder doesn't stick anywhere. I don't want it to. So we're going to treat that. Then I'm going to stamp the autumn in Versamark ink. We're going to use some white embossing powder and use our heat gun to melt that. I wanted it to have a little dimension. So we're going to use those dies to cut it out and then I'll cut several more to stack behind it and give it a little bit of height. And again, we're going to use the action wobblers here. You can see the larger action wobbler. And um, again, this die cut, the action wobbler fit perfect on the background. It wasn't too large. So we're going to go ahead and adhere him right there. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so we still have a couple foxes left. And I, had, I finished all the cards pretty much the same. So let's take a look at how they turned out. 
All right, so here's the one we colored together. And again, we kept that strong, vibrant uh, focal point there in the center, a little bit of text in the background and a lighter color so that it falls to the background. So I added a couple little gems there scattered throughout the leaves and some glitter to each of the leaves with a Spectrum Noir glitter pen. I just think that this is so cute. Keeps it clean and simple, but something a little interesting. All right, here we go, another strong fo focal point. Nice and vibrant, again, keeping with that same theme of a central focal point with the leaves blowing. And then here is our little Autumn is Calling one. Uh, another adorable one, again, an action wobbler. We kept those leaves flowing in the background and they come right through the sentiment, which brings your eye, leads your eye from the top corner all the way down through the sentiment to the fox. And then finally, this one I just put together using some leftover pieces. I didn't have many, so what I did was I added a little background using some Copic markers and a bit of stippling. A little bit of uh, interest there for some clouds and a little bit of ground. So what do you think? Too simple or simply perfect? I don't know. I always have a hard time with clean and simple because it's hard to make myself stop. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I always try to include enough so that you guys feel confident enough to try these techniques on your own, but I also try to keep it succinct enough that I'm not monopolizing your time. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. You want them shorter, you want them longer, or are they just right? As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You'll be able to find all of the featured supplies in the description box below, so check there if you're looking for anything, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.